What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here finishing off the React Native Redux application that we've been working on. So this video we're going to finish off the modal. Uh, there's still some stuff to do after that, but we want to finish off this modal over here. We created this few transpose codes button and uh, i got to sort out that button. I know how to fix that. And then there's some, we have to sort out all this content and fix this hard coded stuff in here. So that's what we're going to do in this video. The last video is quite messy, but we'll tie things up nicely here and explain what's going on. If you're enjoying the series so far, please make sure that you have subscribed and you like this video and leave some comments below letting me know how much you're enjoying this. I really appreciate that. Anyway, let's dive into the code. Right, so here we are, we are left off in the chords modal. Uh, there's some little quick tweaks I want to do. First of all, this button container, this whole button, it should be coming in after the container style. So we have the the container style here. Uh, well, no, we have the, the header style and then we have the content style. It's supposed to come in after the content style. So that is where this button should be. Just a little heads up there. And then another little thing is the content style. For the content style, I wanted to have a specific, no, it wasn't the content style. Yeah, it was. The content style over here, we have justify content center. Now the content style is actually not meant to be that. That's what, uh, we need to change this up a bit. So align items, yes, that's still center, but the justify content, we want this to be space around so that everything is evenly spaced. All the content is equally spaced above and below uh, the top borders. And on top of that, we just wanna add a little margin bottom of 10 to it, just so that there's some space between the last bit of content and the button. Because when you fill up the whole screen of content, the last row gets a bit close to the button. So that's just one little thing we had to do there. Uh, the rest of it is all pretty much as we expected, it's fine. So let's continue on with this application. So I think the first thing I want to sort out is this header style over here. Now, currently we've got, uh, well, yeah, in the header style, we've, we've got a bunch of stuff. I've really messed this up. No, okay, so the header style is fine, sorry. Header style is cool, we don't have to touch it. In the content style, the top row, this is the row that I really want to look at now, this content row style. This is the, the item head style. So this is one of those head style things. I want to sort out these hard-coded values here. So what we're going to do is we are going to need to connect this to Redux because we need to get the uh, we need to get the selected key index and the selected capo as well as the selected keys. So if you think about it, we've got our whole return statement here. Underneath here, I want to get um, well, we want to get this dot props dot selected values dot selected key index and selected capo. So that's selected values from there. Selected key index. So we've done this before, so it shouldn't be too surprising to you. So this is like that's going to equal this dot props. So we basically have this dot props dot selected values dot selected key index, and we also have this dot props dot selected values and selected capo. Uh, and we also have the stop prop stock keys. So that is all that sorted. Yes, Lynn's just freaking out because we haven't implemented this yet. And what I also need to remember to do now is we have to map the state to props. We, we've actually already done that, so that's all sorted. So we've already got this, we did this in, when you first set up the modal, which is great. So we can actually use this right out the box. Now I want to implement this for the key over here. This key over here, I want to have the keys at the selected key index. So when you select a key, the top one I want to say is like um, key selected key index uh, dot key. Because if you remember from, where did we put it? We put it in our reduces, our key list over here. We want to get the dot key value. So if the selected key index is zero, then we want to get the key of selected key index zero, which is dot key, which is C. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And now this arrow is fine. That's hard coded in. I need to remember to put that in the video description. Uh, I'm not putting it in this video description. It was in the last description, so you should have it there. Now, what we need to do here is get the selected capo to go in here. And that's pretty straightforward. We just have, um, 
selected kappa. Um, and that's all sorted. So it's kappa, if it's seven, then it's seven chords, and that is how that works. So I'm not going to focus on showing you what the application looks like. Or maybe I can, since it's already open. So let's just check it out quickly. Right, here's our application all loaded up. And I'm going to go to view transpose chords. And there we go, we have key C and capo 7 chords. And if we change this to key F and capo 3, then we go to view transpose chords and it will say key F and capo 3 chords. So that's all working perfectly fine. The rest of the stuff over here we have to sort out uh, by what we're going to do next. So next up, let's go into application. What we need to do in here, so we have this messy little bit here. So remember this is our one row style, which is the, the header row. In here, I want to return the uh, the data or data, how you pronounce that. And for that, we're going to do quite a bit of things. So I'm going to create a new whole um, lifecycle method above here called render chord rows because we're going to have a whole bunch of rows going on. And this is also going to it's going to take the styles so we've already got the content row style because we're reusing this now so we want to use the content row style the item container style and the item style from styles now in the last video we already set those up down here because we're using them as well in this um header row up here so item container style um and the item style and the item head style that's all used. We're not using item head style again, but we need the content row style, item container style, and item styles. We're also going to need um, to use the props again, the selected values, just as usual. So this isn't new either, we just implemented this now. So we need the selected key index and the selected capo, as well as the keys from the application state, which is stored in the stop props. So that is all sorted. Uh, I don't know, uh, I've got to say equals, sorry about that. Now, we're going to return the keys.map. So we're going to map through every single key, which is um, this, uh, this key stored over here. We're going to map through each one of these, like there's 11 of them, because we need to map through them all anyway. And then for each key, uh, we need to do something. So we implement that as follows. And I'm going to set a count because we need to keep track of what we're counting through. So we're going to say let count and let it start with equaling zero. There's some good JavaScript for us to learn here. So we're going to say let key chord index. Sorry, I, I'm actually, I've changed my mind. So we're going to say like the way I implemented this, I'm going to say key chord index is going to equal count plus the selected key index. So it's going to map through each key and then we're going to keep adding count to it. So we're going to add one to the index each time it maps through. Like later on, at the end of this, after this we're going to say count plus plus. So each time it maps it's going to increment by one. And uh, we want to say if this is bigger than 11, then I'm going to put this on a new line, we want this to equal count plus um, selected key index minus 12. Otherwise, we just want it to be count plus selected key index. Now, there's a lot of ways you can write this. You could have written this using an if statement, but I think in this case, it works out nicely because we're calculating values each time. Now, we need to do the same for the uh, kappa chords index. So we have to say count kappa chord index I'm going to say that's going to equal to the key chord index plus the selected kappa. And in the same way, like, so this is the calculated kappa chord. I'm going to say if it's bigger than 11, then we want to say this is equal to key chord index plus selected kappa. So this key chord index here is the chord that we've chosen, and then the selected kappa is the value we're adding on. So we've worked this out before as well. This is how we work out our calculated uh, kappa key. In this case, if it's bigger than 11, then we want to say what it is, minus 12. Or if it's not, then we just say what it is. So it's chord index plus selected 
capo. Now there's, as I said, many ways you could have written this, but this is kind of the way I'm going to write it. Now, each time that happens, we want to increment the count. And then finally in here, we want to return uh, the view that's going to go inside. So this is going to be pretty similar to what we have here, which is going to be a view. And when you're mapping through things, you have to give something a key. In this case, I'm going to make the key equal to key. So that's just coincidence that they're the same um, the word. So a key is always a property you need to add to things you're mapping, just so it helps you organize your React content. So this is going to take content row style. And view, view style. So this is going to have a view inside. The style in here is going to be the item container style. So item container style. Close that view tank there. And remember, we're going to have a bunch of these item container styles. So I'm going to make space for one to go there and one to go there. And in here, the first one is going to be text style. And that's going to equal item style. Pretty straightforward. We've done this all before, so it's not going to be too new to you. Sorry, gotta say, get my stuff right. And in here, we just say, in this case, we want to get the the keys at the key chord index dot key. All sorted. Now, this might be a bit confusing if you don't know your music theory, but it's it's fine. Bear with me. So next up, we want to have that that view for the arrow. So this is going to have style and it's going to be item container style. Yep. And in here we have text and the style is going to be item style, all sorted. And we have the arrow that I'm copying and pasting. You can just copy it from down here when you use the tier. So that's fine. It's in the description of the last video. Now, what have I done wrong here? I still need to do stuff. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much sorted. I don't know why the view is freaking out, so I've got to figure that out in a second. But we'll worry about that later. View. And view. And hang on one second while I try to figure out what's going on here found it, it is this bracket over there that was not closed. See, simple little things. And again, we're going to use a style.item container style finally over here. And everything in here is pretty much the same, it's the item style. So I'm just copy and pasting that, except the value is not going to be keys at key chord index dot key. Actually, I messed this up. It's supposed to be key chord index and then dot key. There we go. Good thing I noticed that. This one is going to simply be the... It's going to be keys instead of um, the key chord index. It's also going to be dot key. But instead of key chord index, it's going to be the capo chord index that we worked out up there. So that's actually it for application. This just needs a semicolon over there. And this is... All we need, it's actually all sorted. The final thing is we need to um, render it in here. So remember we called this render chords rows. So I'm gonna go all the way down here. And in there, I wanna say this dot render chords rows. That's the function that we call and that will render each of these. For each key, it's gonna return this view and it's gonna go in there. So that's why it's gonna be inside this content style here but still going to take like all of what we have here so i'm going to minimize that so that's the header kind of thing i know it's quite a mouthful of code but this is all it is so if you can grasp all of this that's our whole modal done with the layout and everything and as you can see quite a lot of layout things so let's go look into our application to see the finished product all right here it is and uh just got to move it around a bit I've opened the um, chords model, and this is it all implemented as we expected, which is perfect. So we have our header over there, and we have our C and G and all of that stuff. Everything's calculated perfectly. So if you had D, like if your chords are C, 
go into kappa 7 if you have a whole bunch of other chords in that there as well you could say oh g kappa 7 is actually d and a kappa 7 is e so it's just a whole cheat sheet kind of thing for all of the stuff above and look we can change it so if we change this to g and kappa 5 we'll go here and g kappa 5 is c a kappa 5 is d all of the other notes like all the way g round to g flat which is the note just before g so that's how that works and that's our full chord modal transition thing done now i just wanted to point out a few things so in here we have our modal which represents the whole modal as a whole which is invisible at the start but when we hit the button it goes true then we have the modal style so the modal style is this background that is transparent in here then inside that we have the container style and the container style refers to this whole container in here which has the margins making it so that it's not covering that background that we've set before it's a transparent background for the modal style. Then we have our header style. The header style is just this over here. We've set the styles down here, like modal style, container style, header style. It's got a height of 40. It's got content in the center, and it's got the background color. Then for the header style, we had that little view. Sorry, I've lost my screen. And uh, let me get it back. We had this view. It's a style color of white, and it says chord transitions. Down under that, we have the content style. And the content style was this whole section here. It's not actually including the button. It goes down to there. The content style is a margin bottom of 10 to give that space there for the button. And then there's also a button container style over here, which contains the button and then the button inside it as well, which is the button. <laughs> so that's pretty straightforward. In here, we have our different uh, content row style. So the content row style, if we look down here, uh, content row style has a flex direction of row so every time we add flex to the content like the item container it's a flex of one so it'll take up as much space as it possibly can and since there's three items in this row that have a flex of one they will equally be spaced between each other so that is how that works because the item container style is one and in the items as well they're all centered as well so that's perfect as we wanted um up here we have the this content row style here it's got that gonna hide this again so we have this item head style and the item style. So what this does is key G and all the other ones as well, they all have item style and item head style. They first take the item style. So they're all centered. They have a font size of 16 and there's um, text align center as well. And then they take the item head style, which is font weight of 900. So then they become bold and then they have a font size of 14. So 14, like the head style, because it comes second in the array, it means this overwrites what's in the item style. So that's how that works. And then we applied this item style and item container style and content row style, all of that same stuff up over here to the each key that gets rendered. So each one gets rendered. And then as you map through the keys, a new index comes in with count. And we just add one index to each of these all the way through. And the same here, one index to each of these all the way through to the bottom. And that's how we calculate all this. So that pretty much does it for the app. And an ad has just popped up, my bad um we're gonna close it there so there's our working app but i know you guys all love to have ads in your apps just like i do because you make some money out of it um not much uh, i've made like about i don't know probably 70 cents by now you'll see in the next video as we set up the application for that so i'm going to show you how to implement ads into the application because i just know that's a thing a lot of people like to do and we have not really implemented that anywhere else and i don't see it implemented many other places so it'll be nice to use that and show you guys how it's used. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in the next two videos. I think two two or three videos. Depends how long it takes. But yeah, I hope you look forward to that. Uh, if you're enjoying the videos, please make sure that you have subscribed so you can see when new ones come out. And hit that bell to be notified for new videos coming out. Because I don't want you to miss any of this. And then, yeah, leave a like. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Be sure to comment as well. Really appreciate the comments. But otherwise, I'm heading out. Ciao.